Good morning, everyone. Today is Ash Wednesday, so this is the beginning of Lent, this holy season of prayer and penance, preparing our hearts for the celebration of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, the biggest feast of the whole year. So just want to explain a couple of things about what's going to happen today at Mass. So there's this old tradition that on Ash Wednesday, you receive ashes on your forehead. So you get a little sign of the cross and ashes on your forehead. It's an ancient symbol of prayer and penance. You see it in scripture, for example, at the end of the book of Job. uh, After he repents, he says he uh, repents in uh, in dust and ashes, right? There's this sort of common theme you hear throughout scripture about that. So to this day, Christians do this on Ash Wednesday. They receive ashes on their foreheads, sort of like as an outward sign of this very uh, important season that we're entering into today. So if you're wondering what the ashes come from, they're made from palm branches. You know, on Palm Sunday, which is the beginning of Holy Week, everyone carries their palm branches into Mass, and then afterwards, people tend to keep them at home or wherever, and eventually they're collected once again and then burned, and then you make ashes from them. So that's what the ashes are from. And this this is not a sacrament. It's just sort of a devotional thing, a sacramental, you might say. So this is open to anyone. You don't have to be Catholic. You don't even have to be Christian to do this. You're certainly welcome to uh, participate in this and receive ashes on your forehead. So this will happen right after the homily. It'll come forward just like you do for communion, and uh, we'll have the same stations for receiving ashes on your forehead. You come forward, they'll put the cross on your forehead and say the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, to which you can say amen, and then you'll go back to your seat. Also, I wanted to explain something we're going to do special throughout the whole season of Lent, beginning today. So this is meant to be a special season of prayer, and so to have an extra little thing for the school day, we're going to start praying what's called the Angelus. So the Angelus is another sort of traditional prayer that's very common in the church, and it comes from, imagine being back in the old days when you lived off in some village someplace, and maybe there was a monastery in your village, and they had a bell tower. Well, the monks or the religious sisters there would pray at certain hours of the day. They'd pray first thing in the morning at maybe 6 a.m. They'd pray at noon, and then they'd pray again at, uh, in the evening at 6 p.m. And priests and religious still do this to the day. They, they, they might not have a, a bell tower necessarily, but we still pray uh, in that pattern. So for the villagers to participate in this, there began to be this custom that when they heard the bells go off at those different times of the day, they would stop whatever they were doing, and they would pray the Angelus, which includes a couple of, uh, you, the leader says a little prayer, everyone says a little response, and then you say the Hail Mary. And uh, we're going to practice here in a minute so you get the hang of it. But it was supposed to be a way for all of the village to share in that life of prayer. So starting today at 1 p.m. on the dot, no matter what you're doing, I'm going to interrupt everyone on the school PA system, and we'll all stand, and then I'll lead us in the Angelus. And we're going to do that every day, uh, every school day throughout the Lenten season. So let's just practice this a little, a little bit. So Peter, if you could pull it up onto the screen. We'll have the words here. All right. So before we start, though, there's one part on the screen. It says to genuflect. And it's at the words when I say, and the word became flesh. And everyone genuflects and you say, and dwelt among us. And then you stand back up. And why do we do that? Well, the word became flesh. What we're talking about is Jesus the Word of God. It's a quote from the first chapter of John when he's speaking about Jesus becoming incarnate, becoming a human being for us. This was such a pivotal, crucial moment in the history of all of existence that we venerate that moment with a genuflection at those words. So that's what we're doing at that part. It's out of reverence for the incarnation, Jesus becoming human being, a human being for us. So, let's give this a little practice. Everybody, please stand for the Angelus. So, I'll say the leader part, and you all come in where it says, all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So with that, let's calm our hearts and begin Mass. Jesus Christ, King of Heaven's glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door and pray to your father in secret, and your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to tell you a story about my life. It's kind of a sad story, but it's certainly relevant for what we're doing here today. So let's go back to the year 2012. I was a senior in college. I just celebrated my 21st birthday. And I remember I was walking to the cafeteria for dinner at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota, where I was in seminary. And I'd swipe my card to pay for my meal. And then I'd picked up my tray to go start filling it with food and my phone went off in my pocket. And normally I wouldn't have answered it because I was like right about to eat and it's you know, kind of rude to take a phone call when you're eating with people. But for some reason I, I did and I looked at it and it was my brother Mark calling me. So I answered the phone and he was sort of stuttering through his words, he wasn't sure what to say. And then he said that our brother Peter had died. He was the one just above me in age. He was 23 and a half years old. Uh, They don't know what happened. He was asleep, he looked like. But when they came and checked on him, he was gone. And they didn't ever find out what caused it. They did all kinds of autopsies and blood work and all that sort of thing. But as far as we know, he just fell asleep and then didn't wake up. So I put my tray back down And I didn't really know what to do, so I just walked slowly back to the seminary by myself. And I remember sitting in the back of the chapel. No one was around. I was just in shock, just crying out to Jesus and wondering why this was happening and trying to just understand what this all meant. And then eventually went back home, and we had the whole funeral and this whole ordeal, just a bit of a whirlwind. And I remember being at the funeral mass, and we sang a a Matt Maher song called Christ is Risen. And in that song, there's the bridge where he says, Oh, death, where is your sting? 
oh hell, where is your victory? And I remember at that moment, my mom stands up and starts like screaming out those words in front of this whole church. And it's a quote from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. One of the things that's really powerful about our faith is that it's able to look death in the face and almost like mock it. And I never really appreciated that until that moment. In the midst of all that was going on in my family and all that grief and all that sorrow and just trying to comprehend the fact that I was never going to see my brother ever again and that we were literally in a few minutes going to go bury him six feet under the ground. In that moment, it really sunk in what our faith means. That Jesus, because of his resurrection, gives us the hope that in moments like that, we're going to see our loved ones again. Oh, death, where is your sting? That's what we can say because of our faith in Jesus. Now, as I said, during this Mass, we're all going to come forward and receive ashes on the forehead, and you'll hear the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It's kind of ominous, right? Sort of morbid. But what that is meant to do is it's meant to not only remind us of this fact that is true, right? We are all going to die someday. It's inescapable. Death and taxes, right? But we don't have to be afraid. Because even in that lowest possible place, even in death itself, Jesus went there. And he was victorious even there. You see, all of us will, in our own different ways, struggle with this fear of death. Maybe it might be now, maybe it's down the road. Who knows when it's going to happen, but it's just part of life. And the secular world around us does not have an answer to that. It just tries to ignore it. It tries to run away and never talk about it. But inside all of us, there's sort of this existential fear because we know that that will be the end for all of us someday. And so what an incredible gift to be given hope, even in that place of darkness. And that's what today is about. It strikes me that Ash Wednesday, when I was at the parish, this was one of the most highly attended masses of the whole year. I was like, really? Ash Wednesday? It's like the day of all the penance, and it's kind of sad, and everyone literally gets ashes on their foreheads. Wouldn't there be a better day to come, like maybe Easter or Mother's Day or something? No. Ash Wednesday was one of the most well-attended masses every year, every time I was at the parish. And I think the reason why is because of that reality, that part of our hearts that's kind of afraid of death, but maybe doesn't want to think about it too much, when we come to Jesus in this context of faith, we're given that hope. That's what Lent is all about. Yes, it's a time of prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Those are all ways that we can enter into this season of repentance, but really, Lent is just about getting back to the basics of our Christian faith, sort of like spring cleaning for the soul to make a place once again for God to be the center of our lives. And we do this not just because we like to focus on depressing things or penance, but Ash Wednesday is only the beginning of the story. What it's leading to is the glory of the resurrection on Easter Sunday. That's what this whole season is about. And in the resurrection, Jesus not only wants to come into our lives, but he wants to give us hope in all those places where maybe we're struggling to have hope. So let's truly enter into this holy season. It's such a season of grace. God wants to pour out his blessings upon our school. And if we just make room for him, he's going to do just that. As the opening prayer from Mass says, we begin this holy campaign, taking up the spiritual weapons of discipline and self-denial. It's like a battle. We're entering into that fight. And Jesus is going to be right here next to us every step of the way. Amen?